All right, hello and welcome to the next lecture. There's not a whole lot of content for this week. We're just going to uh, wrap up BSTs. Uh, there's a very complicated removal algorithm that'll be the highlight of this. Uh, but it shouldn't take too long unless I start talking forever. So the first thing that I want to do is introduce you to my cat. His name is Alonzo, and I call him Lonzo for short. He's named after Alonzo Church, if you've heard that name before. He is uh, the inventor of this thing called the Lambda Calculus, which uh, is very important for the subfield of computer science that I worked on in grad school, and it's wonderful. He was also Alan Turing's PhD advisor, so if nothing else, he's famous by association. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is midterm two, because this is week 10 we're on right now, and oh man, you can see that I searched for memes before this, so I can put that on the title slide, and oh man, during week 12 are we going to have another midterm. So I put the midterm two thingy right here, and uh, there'll be more extra credit, there'll be a uh, review, but the one that I care about showing you right now is the info page. So uh, as usual, on week 12, it'll be available on the Thursday and Friday. Okay, that's the Thursday and Friday, the 29th and the 30th. So same times as we were doing before, and uh, again you have the same amount of time to, to take the uh, to take the exam. So uh, yeah, everything is as normal. Uh, it'll cover all these topics, lectures through week 11. Uh, I try. I won't try and hit too hard all the stuff that I'm going to talk about in week 11. I'll, try and save that for the final, of course, because I'm not evil. Uh, and then Zybook readings. The important thing is that I'm not going to test you on chapter 7, because that is just uh, for your own benefit, reading that chapter. Chapter 7 is about uh, balanced trees, and that's more of a advanced algorithms concept. So we're not going to implement that, and so I'm not going to test you on it. Uh, and then uh, labs 4 through 7, uh, because I'm going to give you a new lab this week on BSTs, but it won't be due in time. Uh, but uh, you should definitely still expect questions on BSTs, of course, because that's definitely part of the lectures. It's definitely part of your reading. Okay, and same format as last time, so it shouldn't be too different. Uh, and I'll post a review video. All right, so that's the midterm, just to make sure it's ingrained in your mind that it's going to happen. Week 12. Because the first midterm was in week 6. And then, before we get into the main topic today, I also want to give you a hint for your current lab. Uh, one of the questions is about uh, that evaluation. So if I can just quickly bring up uh, uh, CSI 41 lab 07 expressions dot each. You're going to be working out of expression nodes and uh, I just want to give you a little hint for the evaluation part. So if you're supposed to do like, I don't know, whichever one that I did in my example, maybe I'll make this one a minus just to make it more fun. Uh, three minus two plus four. So this, this is really, in English, first do three minus two, then add the four. Okay, three minus two, then add four. That's what it's representing. Maybe we'll put that in a box. And the way that you evaluate this to get the final answer, which is, I don't know, 1 plus 4 equals 5, how do you get the 5 out of this? Well, you need a recursive case and you need a base case. And the recursive case, as usual for binary uh, trees, you'll, you'll work on the left subtree and the right subtree. So you'll recurse left and right. And what happens when you recurse left and right? You get the answer. You can assume that you get the answer for the left and right subtrees. Okay? That will give you the answer. Your job is to build up the answer by looking at, because it's in probably an internal node that you're looking at, by looking at this op character. So it's either set to the character plus, the character minus, things like that, if it's not a leaf node. If it's a leaf node, you know that the left and right are null, and then you have a data that you can look at. Okay, it's, it's always one or the other. And so in the recursive case, 
you got an internal node, so you have a character to look at, and you'll just see, okay, if it was a plus, I'm going to add the two results together, okay? Combine them using the operation. Using op. And so that's the recursive case. The base case is eventually you're going to get down to single nodes. Okay? Leafs. Or leaves, I guess. Uh, base case. You're at a leaf, and left and right, you know you're at a leaf because, because left and right are null. And so you'll look at the data. Because every leaf node has data associated with it. It has a number. Okay? Look at the data. It's as if the expression was just four. Well, what's the result of manipulating four to get a final answer? That's an integer. Well, it's just four. So uh, that's all you have to do is return it in the base case. OK, so that's, uh, that's a hint for the evaluation part of your current lab. And with that, let's get into the main chunk of today, which is understanding BSTs better. So we've talked about them quite a bit. We, uh, we've, we've implemented things as well. Uh, but uh, I guess the key thing is, remember the binary search tree property. Yeah, of course, you have a root as usual. But everything to the left is always going to be smaller than 4 over here. It's always going to be greater than 4 over here. OK? So then if I can, I can put a 3 here, and then like a 1 here, and then a 2. Er, can't put a 2 there, that's for sure. Put a 3.5 here. And so everything on this side is less than 4. Everything on this side will be greater than 4. Like if this was a 5, then I could put 4.5 here, and then like a 42 here. As always, on the left it's smaller, on the right it's greater. And everything respects that, OK? So I couldn't put a 3 here, because that doesn't respect this node. That's a, that's a 0.5, by the way. So that's a BST. We know and we love them now. Uh, one thing that I do want to tell you how to do, because it will be uh, part of your lab for this week, uh, is that you can store keys and values as separate things in your tree. So uh, I guess I should get back green, huh? What you can do is, well, yes, the, the tree can be associated with its keys, like that's the way it's, it's arranged. But uh, let's see, how do I want to do this? Maybe I can do 2, then 4, then 1, and then this one could be 7. You can have it like this, but you can also store keys and values. So at 5, maybe I'm storing high. At 7, I'm storing maybe, I don't know, hello. At four, I'm, st I'm storing the string A. At two, I'm storing the string B. At one, I'm storing the string C. I should have made these circles bigger, obviously. But I hope you get the idea. Uh, the keys of a BST are, uh, influence how the tree is arranged. But it's no problem to add values as well. And that allows you to associate a key with a value. Just like for hash tables. This is like another option. So the idea is, all right, I can search for 2, and I'll get out the b. That's the value at 2. OK? So you can store any kind of type, and it doesn't have to be ordered. The values don't have to be ordered. They can be as fancy as you want, as long as the keys are ordered, OK? All that matters for BSTs is that the keys are ordered. That's the key. No pun intended. We don't care about the values. You can put whatever you want inside the value part of a BST, a binary search tree. OK, so we've talked about a few of these operations. 
Uh, we've talked about insert, we've talked about search. Uh, there are two more, get the size and remove, that are common. Uh, and remove is going to take a while to talk about. So let's talk about the other ones uh, a little bit. So remember, uh, maybe I should put search first, actually. That's the more basic one. Uh, what if I double click? That's how we do it. Okay, so search, remember, it's just you have a tree. Uh, go there and see if something's there. If so, retrieve the value, perhaps. And if the tree has values, uh, you should return the value. Otherwise, you can say, oh, yes, I found this node. Uh, maybe a Boolean result, things like that. Uh, insert is very similar. Like, say I wanted to add 3 to this tree. There's only one place that it would go. You pretend to insert, or you pretend to search. And if you don't find the thing, that means it wasn't already in the tree, put it where you would have found it. And that's the key for that, where you would have found it. So if I want to insert 3, well, it's smaller than 5. So I'm looking here. It's greater than 2, smaller than 4. So it has to go here. And maybe I want to store, I don't know, AA as the value for the key 3. OK? So that's essentially all you have to do. It's uh, search and then some extra stuff. So we talked about the running time of all that. And then size is, well, how big the tree is, how many nodes in the tree. And the remove is how to get rid of a node. So like, I want to get rid of the 3. I want to get rid of the 4. I want to get rid of the 5. How do I do that? And that's pretty subtle. So uh, I guess because I've told you now that these can be used like hash tables, I guess the question in your mind might be, well, why don't we just use a hash table? Surely this is more complicated, right? Well, there are some trade-offs. Uh, I guess the first one, the uh, the biggest one, the most useful thing that you could use a hash or a use a BST for, as opposed to a hash table, is that you can always get values within a range for BSTs because they respect order. You're like, all right, I want everything between three and four. There is a way to search through binary search trees to notice that okay, these are the only two nodes that we are going to care about. Okay, or I want all the nodes between uh, one and three. There's a certain way of getting to those nodes quickly. Okay, so that's that's a way to do it. And then also, just remember your in-order traversals. You can also just get all the elements in order. Uh, you don't have that kind of guarantee with a hash table. You have no control over what bucket things get put in. So you can't go and traverse the hash table and expect things to come out in order. Okay, uh, another thing is that you can, I guess technically you can save very, very slightly on memory with a BST. It's still, uh, space-wise, you're storing n things at the end of the day, so it's always O of n space complexity for the actual nodes of a BST. But uh, you don't need to make a table with more rows than you'll ever need. Because for hash tables, sometimes you might have empty slots, right? You're like, ah, uh, things hash to here, to here, to here, but not to here or here. OK? That's what uh, binary search trees are good for, because the second you put something in the tree, it's meant to be there, right? If it wasn't there, it wouldn't be, uh, wouldn't uh, exist in the tree at all. OK? Uh, and so in order to implement the abstract data type associated with the BST, which has these operations, search for a key, insert a key slash value pair, perhaps, get the size, remove something. Uh, you can essentially just copy and paste all the stuff that we did for the data structure. So 
we talked about how to search, we talked about how to insert, and it's pretty simple to modify what we did last time to add values at the keys as well. Okay, so it's like the struct will look like uh, struct tree node. Maybe you have int keys, and then you have string values, and then of course you have your left and right. Whee. So the only addition is values, and if you just remember to set that every time, nothing changes. Okay, so that's. Uh, all that in a nutshell. And so we already talked about the complexity of search and insert, which is nice. So uh, just remember briefly what the what the big deal is. Uh, let's pretend we have all this again. There we go. So to search, uh, remember that we needed to like, let's use purple. To search, we need to go left or right, uh, and at most, we need to traverse, like, if I wanted to search for one, two nodes. If I wanted to search for something that's not there, that's the worst case. So if I wanted to search for zero, I'd go left, left, and then compare again. I'd be like, all right, and then try and go left one more time, and then I find that there's nothing there. So I, I essentially do one, two, three, and then maybe a null check comparison. So it's that many. And so we talked about how this was, uh, at the worst case, the height of the tree. Okay, so I can go the height of the tree searching. Uh, that's how many nodes I have to inspect. So uh, search full of h, where h is the height of the tree in the worst case. Obviously, the best case, like, all right, I'm searching for 5. Constant. It's right at the root. Uh, insert, say this was the original tree and I inserted the three, insert, uh, in its worst case, again, it has to search to get to the very, very bottom, the, the bottommost level, and then it puts something there. Okay, so it's search plus some constant operations to make a new node and to set a few pointers around. You got, you got your parent pointers, you got your child pointers, things like that. Okay, so at the end of the day, it's still O of H because search dominates. Okay, so it's like O of H plus O of 1, and we get O of H. So uh, that's all of that. And uh, we talked about space complexity as well for search. You just have to keep some pointers around. So these are time, by the way. For search, you just have to like keep a pointer. Like, all right, I'm looking at this one. Okay, I'm going to go left, so now ends this, things like that. Uh, and so with just one extra pointer, that's constant space. Uh, and when you make a new node on the heap, that's just one node, so it's still constant space. OK, uh, that's all that. So let's pretend we wanted a size operation now. So how in the world are we going to count how many nodes are in this tree? And you have two options. And they give you different running times. OK. Uh, So option one is you save the number of nodes, like your tree data structure or your tree ADT. Uh, it's like, all right, I have class tree. And I've got some stuff, got some public stuff. And your member variables. Well, of course, you're going to have the root still, tree node root and then you can also just save the number of nodes like in size so it's one extra thing you need to store constant space but uh, the second you do that just an insert uh, every time you insert you just have to add one to that
Okay, and if you delete something, again, you'll subtract from size. And it makes it really fast to retrieve the value. Since you just retrieve a value, right? And uh, in your lab that's currently out, lab seven that's not due yet, uh, option two is something you're programming. So you have the option also of just counting. All right, I wanna know how big this tree is. I don't wanna save the size. I will just recursively count how many nodes are in this tree. I'll count the left subtree, I'll count the right subtree, and remember to count my root as well. And that's a recursive problem uh, that ends up visiting every node. So because you visit every node, the running time is of one. Or sorry, because you visit every node, it's O of 1 in every node, but you visit all of them, so it's O of n. Sorry about that. Uh, because you visit every node, the running time is O of n. So uh, do you want to save one int and get constant time, or do you want to save nothing, and every time you want to get the size, you have to waste linear time? So it's up to you. Maybe if space is a real issue, you're going to have to go with option two. But uh, I guess the point of this class is to talk about trade-offs, right? Uh, so with that, I think we are ready to start, at least, VST removal. And I want to just upfront tell you that this is a difficult topic, okay? We have a tree, and we want to get rid of a node, like we hate four, uh, or 42. How in the world can we get it out of the binary search tree? Uh, so. Uh, that's the idea of this sec uh, subsection of the, of the slides. And let me prove to you that removal is very complicated. So uh, let's go back to this tree, my running example. So let's pretend. Uh, well, let me show you the easy cases, I guess. Uh, some nodes are easier to remove than others. And uh, I think you can imagine that if I wanted to get rid of a leaf, it's not a big deal, right? Like, if I wanted to get rid of uh, one, for example, I could be like, oh, could buy one. All I have to do is worry about setting two's left child to be null now. It needs to be like set to null. Okay, that's not bad. The issue arises when I want to delete something like 4, which has a child. Where does it go now? Where can I move it? It's like weird things are happening. Like I have two empty edges leading off to nowhere. Where do I put this 3 now? And then the worst problem is uh, what happens when I want to remove like the root? It's got two children. If I get rid of the root, now I suddenly have two trees. How do I resolve this? I'm gonna add some extra question marks for that one. This one's like easy. Okay. Uh, I guess the question mark should be associated with that node. Okay, so hopefully that convinces you at least slightly that removal is a weird thing to do. So, well, uh, I'm going to have to let you believe me for a second that you're going to need this. Uh, and I'm going to talk about the operations of predecessor and successor for a tree. So, uh, predecessor, if you want to ask for the predecessor of a key, uh, or of a node, is an operation that finds the next in order, or sorry, the previous in order node in the tree. Okay, and then successor is the exact opposite, symmetric. Uh, successor, if you want to find the successor of a node, is an operation that finds the next in order node of the tree. So let me give you some examples. 
with my favorite tree now. So for example, the uh, predecessor of two in the tree to the right is the one node, okay? It's just like the thing that comes before it in order, okay? Uh, the successor of five is seven. That's not a huge deal. Uh, so there's some, some nice properties about trees that make it easy to find sometimes. But here's some weird stuff. The successor of three is four. It's up in the tree. And the predecessor of five is four. It's got to go down, but not too far down. Uh, I think that's all I want to show you. Yeah, so the predecessor of four is three. The predecessor of three is two. Somehow you have to jump up there. Uh, it's a weird kind of operation to want to do, but it's going to be useful for us. So I'm going to talk about successor because I think in your lab I'm going to have you implement predecessor. And so uh, you're going to have to mirror all the stuff. So this successor implementation is not too bad for several cases. OK, uh, let's see here. Let's have our favorite tree again. Uh, the idea for a successor is usually the successor of a node is the smallest node to the right. OK, let me prove that to you. So uh, the successor of 5, it's go right, here's 7, and well, here's the subtree starting at 7, and find the smallest node there. OK, the uh, successor of 2, it's supposed to be 3. And the reason for that is, all right, go right, look at this subtree, and then find the smallest thing in it, OK, which is uh, always going left. So to find the smallest node, just keep going left until you get to a leaf. So how do you find the smallest node in this tree? You just go left forever. Go left, go left, go left, because everything to the left is smaller. So the minimum node will be the one once you, once you stop. Same for uh, the maximum node, go right forever. OK, that's not too bad. So usually the successor will be like this, except when it's not. So sometimes you won't have an initial right child, OK? You have to do some more work. So for example, the successor of 4 is 5. It's up here. Are there any other examples like that? Uh, the successor of 3 is 4. It's up here. Yeah. Successor of 1 is 2. It's up here. So let's talk about 4, because it's an internal node, but still has to go up to find its successor. So from 4's point of view, well, normally we would want to go right and then left forever, but there's nothing there. OK, we can't go right. That option is not working for us. So uh, if you don't have a right child, you have to go up. And the reason for that is eventually, well, if there's nothing greater than you over here, there must be something greater than you up the tree, if there is anything at all. So you need to follow parent pointers until you find the maximum, or the bigger thing, OK? So here's the, here's the pseudocode for this. Follow parent pointers until you find something bigger. And that is guaranteed to be the successor.
Okay, so at four, starting at four, let me use rainbow, because why not? You start at four, and you start going up. All right, then you see two. Well, it's not four. Uh, well, it's smaller than four, so it, it's not definitely not the successor of four. But then you find five, and that is bigger than four. So that is guaranteed. The first thing that you find is that's bigger is your successor. Okay. Okay. So that is the trick. That is how you implement successor. And I'd be happy to prove to you why this works in office hours, maybe. Uh, or maybe if there's extra time, uh, I can do it in lecture. But uh, that is what's going on here. Because you know, eventually, you're going to be coming at yourself from the left side of something. You were on the left side of somebody, and that was your successor. I guess I'm proving it to you right now in words. That was your successor because everything to the right of that node is bigger, and everything above that node is, well, it's either smaller or bigger, and so this one is just the right spot. It is your successor. Okay. Alternatively, you could think about uh, going up until you find a node that has the previous node as the left subchild, or left, yeah, left child. But I like to think about it like this. Follow parent pointers from your current node until you find something bigger. That bigger node is your successor. Okay? Uh, so with that, let's talk about the running time complexity of the successor algorithm. And uh, let's see here. Well, it might do us good to actually go and implement it if we have a second. Uh, we might come back to that. So uh, the running time complexity of successor is the following. Well, you have to search. You have to find the node uh, that you want the successor for, or maybe you can assume that you have it. Uh, I guess it doesn't really matter either way. Let's assume that we're given the node. Okay, so the, the declaration of this function would look something like uh, successor tree node star n, and we want the successor of n itself. Okay, so uh, the way that we go about it is, all right, see if there's something to our right. If there's something to our right, just go right once and then left forever. Okay, and then until you hit a leaf, that is your successor. So at most, right once, right once, left forever, right once, left forever, at most, that's only ever going to be the height of the tree again, right? Because uh, maybe you started at the root and your tree looked like, I don't know, this. This was the height of the tree that you had to go down to find your uh, successor in the worst case. Okay, so you still have to visit nodes. Uh, you have to visit at most the height of the tree plus one nodes. You have to visit on the order of height of the tree nodes is how we say that. It could be off by one or a couple. Not a big deal. So you have to visit height nodes in the worst case. And at each node, you just have to see, all right, uh, I'm going left right now. There's not a whole lot of stuff to do. You just have to keep on going left, checking the fact that there is a, uh, a left pointer that is not null at the moment. OK? So constant work at each node. So uh, that's for the first case. For the other case, it's still O of H. Because for example, uh, say that there was no 3 right here and 4 was the child that we wanted to find the uh, predecessor or the successor of, we would again have to traverse backwards 
H nodes. Okay, you have to traverse the height of the tree, doing constant work at each uh, at each spot. Okay, so uh, that's the idea there, and uh, oh, I was here. Constant work at each node, and again, it's O of H. Because you're either going right and then left forever, or you're going, uh, like if it was over here, the node that we wanted to find the successor of was like on this side of the tree, you'd have to go up a few times. At most, the height of the tree. And constant work at each node, so O of H total work, which is not too bad. And if you had to search, like maybe you were given a key value instead of the node, it would still be the same. So it doesn't really matter. So. Uh, That's quite nice. And then I guess the key thing here is that, uh, let me take a look at how we're doing on time. The key thing here is that predecessor is symmetric. And so you can implement this for your lab pretty much the same way. Uh, and that's, I think, uh, what I want to say there. Maybe quickly. Uh, so actually, this is uh, hard to talk in right at the same time. So I wouldn't implemented this uh, ahead of time, the successor function and we will talk about it now. So this is all the copied code from last time, really. I copied all the stuff from uh, last lecture from the same file, BST examples from the last lecture. We got our search, we got our insert, and uh, it appears that we've made ourselves a tree and we've inserted uh, five into that tree. And so this is what the tree currently looks like. We got ourselves a seven, and then a three, and then a four, and then a five, and I should probably have given myself a bit more room. Seven, then uh, three, then four, then five, and then over here we have 42. Okay, so I have made us a successor function that takes the node that we want the successor of and gives you back a pointer to the node that we uh, that it finds that is the successor. So, for example, if I say uh, successor of the root, and that's going to return back a node, of course, I'll okay, get its data, the data value associated with the, the root successor. Well, oops, why is that open? That would be, well, here's the root. Its successor is 42. Go right and go left forever, but there's no left to go. Uh, the answer should be 42, so it should print 42 to me. Okay, oops. Uh, I appear to have closed out what I was doing. Uh, how about this? That's more like it. And bam, do we have R42. All right, uh, for other things as well, uh, oops. Four is right. I don't have a name for five because we just inserted it into the tree. But if we want to get the successor of the five node, well, we have to walk up to the seven, right? We have to follow a bunch of parent pointers until we finally find something that's bigger. And this should print seven because the data value associated with the successor of five, which lives on four is right. Sorry for all those pointers. Is going to be uh, seven. Just like that. Okay, and then finally, some nodes do not have successors. In particular, the maximum node does not have a successor. So 42, there's no right to go, so we can't go left forever. That's not going to work. We'll have to follow parent pointers until we find something bigger, but we're going to run out of parents. So this is going to return null. 
the fact that there was nothing there, and it looks like I did not, uh, oh, I didn't save it, sorry. There we go, so zero for null. And we shouldn't, we should definitely not try and dereference that, of course. So, oops. Let's talk about the implementation now. So for the successor, to find a successor, we're gonna save the original node that we want to find the successor of, because I'm gonna manipulate in a bit. So, uh, we have two options, of course. Either we go right and then left forever for the normal cases, or uh, for the fancier cases where we have to work our way up, that's when we don't have a right pointer. Okay, so if we do have something to the right of us, well, let's go to the right and then let's go left forever as long as we can, as long as it's not null. Okay, and then the answer is n at that point. Gotcha. All right, so then the other option is, oh man, we couldn't go right. We have to follow parent pointers. Our successor is a parent of ourselves. So this is a weird little while loop, but hopefully it's gonna make sense. So in, in English, it's you wanna keep following parent pointers as long as what you're currently looking at, uh, its parent is smaller than your original node, okay? The current thing that you're looking at, look at its parent, see if it's smaller than your original node. If so, we need to keep on following parent pointers. Okay? And obviously, once we get to the top, we should never dereference null, so we should always make sure that n is, n's parent is not null yet. So we're gonna keep on doing that. And so that's going to, for this case, for five's case, it's going to set, well, n's initially five, then we're gonna make it be its parent, then we're gonna make it be its parent, because it's still less. And finally, oh sorry, gonna make it be its parent because it's still less, gonna make it be its parent because it's still less. And now we're gonna look at n's parent. So this is n pointing right here. This is the original n. n's parent, it's not equal to null because seven's the parent, it's still a real thing. And then it's a data, n's parent's data. Well, it's actually not less than the original node state, it's greater than. So uh, we're gonna stop the loop one early, okay? But otherwise, if it was smaller, we would keep on going up. So it was smaller, we kept going, smaller, kept going. But now it's sitting here and the loop stopped, which means either, either the parent was null or the parent's data was actually bigger or equal to, I guess, but we don't have duplicates, so whatever. And so one last, line, one last line to go to our parent one more time, that will give us the answer. Because either the parent's null, there's no successor, or that parent happened to be greater than or equal to the original node's data, and it was our successor. So either of those cases would have stopped the loop, and we are one away from the answer. I hope that makes sense. So follow the parent one more time, and that's the answer. For 42, here's n originally, then we're gonna move it because it's smaller. And then we're, we're gonna stop the loop because its parent is null. And then we're gonna set it one last time to be null. Okay, so uh, that is a bunch of scribbles, but I hope that the way we got to those scribbles made sense. So that is the successor operation. And then finally, again, n is a pointer to the thing that you wanna return. Either it's null uh, or it actually holds the successor in either case, okay? so. Two options, and that is successor for you. Okay, and again, of course, predecessor is symmetric. If you wanted to find the predecessor of something, you, oh gosh, let's let's use our, sa our favorite tree, of course. If you want to find the predecessor, it's essentially the same thing. You're just going in the opposite direction. Oh no. So close, but yet so far. So for this one, let's say uh, I wanted to find the predecessor of, let's see, how about five? If I wanna find the predecessor of five, that means I need to look in the subtree and find the minimum thing, or find the maximum thing, I'm sorry. The maximum thing, the biggest thing that's smaller than five. So everything that's smaller than five is in this subtree and then the biggest thing is the maximum of this subtree, and you get the maximum by always going right as far as you can. So 
See how it's four and not three? So that's that predecessor. And then again, you just keep on following parent pointers if you want to find the predecessor of, let's say, seven. Why not? You keep following parent pointers until you find something that's smaller. Okay. So again, in either case, it's uh, they're both symmetric. Okay. And we don't have a lot of time left, but uh, let me set us up for next time. Let's talk about the cases for removal. So do I have the our favorite tree? Yes, I do. So removal has three cases. Some are easier than others. We've, we've looked at them a little bit. The first case is you want to delete a leaf. Those are super easy, right? You just get rid of its parent pointer. Yeah. Okay, that's not too bad. Uh, the next hardest thing is you want to delete a node that has one child because it'll still be a valid tree if you move this guy up to be its right child now. You see that? So three can be two's new right child. We can move it up like that. Move it on up. So that's not too bad. Uh, leaf case, this case, we can change that to be that. Replace the node with its uh, child, in essence, in terms of the parent. And then we have the dreaded two children case, or let's let's talk about this one, the two children case. what in the world are we going to do here? And uh, it actually is going to involve either using the predecessor or the successor. Okay, uh, and we'll just pick one for your lab. I think I'm having you pick predecessor. We can talk about it from the point of view of the successor. Uh, and this is where I want to leave us with suspense for next time. How in the world will the predecessor help us remove this node? Okay, so I'll see you in the next lecture.